Display 2.3 uses a two-part optimization process. First, calculating mechanical articulation of the array before calculating the EQ coefficients. Prior to configuring the EQ parameters, the Rig tab is available with details of all aspects of deploying the array. This makes the workflow extremely efficient, particularly in a touring situation as the arrays can be rigged whilst the EQ optimization is run. The Rig Tools window is divided into a number of sections. There is a diagram of the array, a table of cabinet angles, a venue diagram, and three sections with mechanical detail for the array. The array diagram is a scale view of the array. The position with respect to the ground and rear wall is reflected by the scale on the horizontal and vertical axes. The height to the top of the array is shown in white. Note that the measurement is always taken to the uppermost full range cabinet, not to the uppermost subwoofer in arrays with flown subs. The diagram also shows the highest and lowest points in the array in green. The highest point includes the flying grid and flown subs if these are used. The lowest point is usually the easiest way to ensure that the array is flown to the correct height using either a laser measure or the time-honoured method of loosely taping a tape measure to the bottom of the array. The yellow dot indicates the centre of gravity of the entire array. The table of cabinet angles shows all intercabinet angles which can be used to rig the array to match the design. The table is read-only, the values cannot be changed at this stage. The detail diagram shows the venue shell including the coverage details that were specified in the coverage tab and the array position calculated in the splay tab. The mounting options allow final refinement of how the array is deployed. The options available in this section will vary according to the type of array and deployment options selected when the design was started with the array selection. The first option is how the array is mounted. For the majority of systems, this will either be flown or stacked, meaning ground stacked. MLA Mini and WPM arrays may also be pole mounted. If you attempt to select an option that isn't possible due to the quantity of cabinets in the array, a pop-up will warn you that the option isn't available. Ground stacked arrays may be up to six cabinets for all systems, with the exception of MLA Mini, which may be ground stacked with up to eight cabinets. Pole mounted arrays of MLA Mini and WPM may be up to four cabinets. Systems that have been designed with flown subs have the option to retain the subs in the array or not by checking or unchecking the flown subs box. The drop down allows you to select the quantity of subs. The maximum with a WPM array, for example, is three SXF115 subs. The frame type allows the selection of either touring or installation flying frames for flown arrays. Ground stacked wavefront precision systems cannot use installation frames. The lift type allows the option of a two point or single point. The flying frames have mounting positions at the extreme front and back for a two point suspension from which the exact array aim angle can be adjusted by trimming the height of either the front or rear hoist. The flying frames also have a series of holes along the central spine which can be used for single point flying. The aiming section will show which hole on the frame to use to get the optimum array angle as fine adjustment isn't possible with a single point. Finally the height and X distance, the distance from the rear wall, are displayed. These may be manually overwritten if the array cannot be flown exactly where intended. This is the last opportunity to make an adjustment prior to the EQ optimization.
The aiming relates to the angle of the entire array measured at the top cabinet or the flying frame which is always parallel to the centre line of the top cabinet. It is easier to measure from the flying frame and this is where the inclinometer sensor is fitted on all arrays. This is standard on MLA series touring frames and is an optional accessory for wavefront precision frames. The sensor connects to a reader via a standard XLR cable so that array angle can be monitored on the ground to make adjustment very straightforward. The aiming angle is shown in degrees with respect to the horizontal, so a zero means a perfectly horizontal array. A positive angle means an upward tilt on the array, a negative figure means that the array is downward facing. The angle of the lowest cabinet in the array is also shown which makes it easy to check the array aim by measuring the bottom cabinet before the array is flown out to its final trim height. If a dedicated inclinometer isn't available, most smartphones have a simple tilt meter app, just ensure that it is accurately calibrated. The aiming section changes if the lift type is changed to a single point. The design aim is shown and the most appropriate hole on the flying frame to use is indicated. The nearest aim shows the angle at which the array will hang using this hole. If this is not sufficiently close to the design aim, the design aim will be shown in red. In this case, the option is available to use the nearest aim figure by clicking on the Use Nearest button. This updates the mechanical details, including the array diagram, and means that the EQ optimization will have accurate figures for the exact array position to ensure that the optimization still meets the specified coverage. The final section has important details for the loading. If the two point option is selected, the total array mass is shown together with the load on each of the two points. In single point mode, just the total array mass is shown. You will also see if the array meets both BGVC1 and DIN 18800 safety regulations shown by a green pass. If the array fails either standard, this will be replaced by a red fail. Note that BGVC1 is a more stringent safety standard, so it is possible that the DIN 18800 could show pass and BGVC1 fail. We would strongly recommend that you ensure that the array passes both standards, but local regulations in your territory may mean that DIN 18800 is sufficient. Once you have refined all of the rigging options, click Done and move on to the EQ tab.